Hi, this is Tony Morbino here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between modulating hot gas reheat and hot gas bypass. And these two terms um, are commonly used in our industry, but there's a lot of confusion around uh, what they actually are. And some people think they're the same thing, and they're really completely different. So I thought I'd do just a quick video, kind of try to clear that up a little bit. But um, so if you look at this diagram here, uh, there's a reheat coil here. If you take out this reheat coil, you look at what's going on. You have the basic four components of any refrigeration system. So you have your compressor here, your condenser, TXV, and your evaporator coil. And what happens in every refrigeration system has these four basic components. So the compressor is sucking the gas from the evaporator, compressing it, adding heat and pressure to it, sending it to the condenser coil, which then rejects the heat to the relatively cool atmosphere, pushes the refrigerant around to the pressure drop device, thermal expansion valve, drops the pressure, which allows the refrigerant to absorb the heat from your airflow and boil off, thus cooling the, the air, and then it sends it back to the compressor. So what happens in, um, especially in dehumidification cycles, is you're looking to remove the moisture out of the air. And by doing that, you're obviously cooling the air really low. And at some point, like let's say you had a cool rainy day and you blow this very cold air into a space, you may overcool the space. So what we do is we take some of this gas that comes off the compressor, instead of sending it to the condenser, we send some of it to a reheat coil. This is used, uh, generally uses a controller, which is showed here, measures the space temperature, looks at the supplier temperature, things like that. It controls, uh, it used to be a two valve system here, but now it's just a three-way valve, but it's the same premise. Controls the hot gas reheat, it's coming here. So as the air blows across the evaporator coil, cools down, hits the reheat coil, and we send enough gas there to reheat it to the desired temperature required in the space to meet the space load. So that's modulating hot gas reheat. So hot gas bypass is a totally different strategy, totally different animal. So you have your four basic components, your compressor, condenser, TXV, and evaporator, okay? So what happens in some HVAC systems is you have a varying load condition. Um, it could be pretty dramatic, like let's say a VAV application, 100% outdoor application, where if this is a five ton compressor, you have five tons of load, that's great. But let's say your load drops to two tons. Okay, what happens is the refrigerant starts to get very low in temperature and pressure as it gets sucked back into the compressor. It actually frees up your system. So the choices are shut off your compressor or to try and keep it on for a longer time, which is Generally, what we want to do is to keep the compressor running to dehumidify and cool the air. So hot gas bypass does is it takes some of the gas from the compressor, runs it through this bypass valve, and sends it into the inlet of the evaporator coil. So what you're doing is you're falsely loading the evaporator coil with, with some heat load, just like you were adding load to the air coming across the evaporator coil. It's kind of the same principle. The way this uh, valve works. It's a it's a purely mechanical device. Usually there's a bulb that's strapped to this line here that measures the temperature. And that changes the pressure in this line, which allows a spring to open and close. So it doesn't really have any controls. It's just totally mechanical. As the spring opens and closes, allows this gas to flow into the evaporator. So hot gas bypass is purely a freeze prevention uh, mechanical device. It has nothing to do with reheating the air. There's another type of hot gas bypass, which is pretty popular. It's called an APR valve or Raywall valve. And it's really pretty much the same thing. You take, it, it's used to prevent freezing in the system and used to keep your system running at low load conditions. You have your compressor here, you have your suction, hot gas line, which would normally go to the condenser. It's bypassed into this receiver tank. In this case, it's mixed with liquid as well, which takes liquid from your 
evaporator coil, brings it up here, mixes it with the hot gas, mixes it and injects it into the inlet of the compressor. Whereas before we were injecting it into the inlet of the evaporator, this is just a different way of really accomplishing the same thing. So you're falsely loading the system. We don't really use these two devices, hot gas bypass or three wall valve, much in the industry anymore. There's other ways to modulate the compressor. But before we had that technology, this was really all we had. Okay. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, these slides are taken from a presentation we do called Why DX Systems Fail. And if you'd like us to come by and do a lunch and learn, I'll show you a little bit more about uh, DX systems, how to specify them, why they fail, common mistakes, things like that. Go ahead and click the link. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link below the video. It'll take you to this calendar. Just pick a date, sign up, and bring some lunch by. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, uh, there should be a link above the video in the post text. And so thank you very much. And you can always contact us if you have any questions. I hope you have a great day.